Hey everyone, this is Matt from Dirt Motor Rider. So I'm back to talk about the 300 XC. This is a 30 or so hour update, and I've gotten a lot of questions. A lot of people have asked about some of the issues that I've had. Um, and I also just wanted to talk about some of the stuff that I've upgraded on the bike since picking it up back in January. So right now it's uh, mid-September, fall up here in New York, and I've had a decent amount of uh, riding time on the bike. Have had just kind of a busy summer. Kids are playing sports, family commitments, but overall I'm still really happy with this bike. So I have to give a little leniency to KTM. So early 2023, this was a brand new bike. There really wasn't that much detail out there about this TBI model. Um, so everyone kind of that was experiencing things, we were experiencing them for the first time. So a lot of frustration, a lot of confusion. Um, there's some forums out there on Facebook that I joined. And honestly, some of the detail on it is good. And then some of the detail is just bad. Um, it's just not, not everyone has the same experience or the same riding conditions. So this is to provide an update for any of you folks out there looking at the 2024 model or picking up a 2023 model. I actually just put a deposit down on a K, um, I'm sorry, a KTM 65 SX for my 10 year old. Um, so he's going to be pretty excited. He's nine, he's turning 10. This is going to be his birthday present, but uh, he's moving up from a CRF 110 and getting a little serious about possibly racing. So um, all good, all good stuff. Um, so if you can pick up a leftover 23, basically I think the only main difference is gonna be the front forks. You're gonna have uh, springs in the front forks as opposed to uh, the air system that KTM offers. Um, again, it's gonna be personal preference what you're gonna wanna do. But that notwithstanding, do wanna talk about some of the cool stuff that I have updated on the bike. I wanna also talk about some of the experiences I've had regarding some of the issues, the splooging, the bogging, the following the plugs. So I do, I do want to talk about that, but mostly I just want to say it's a great bike. I'm really happy with it. I've had a lot of fun this summer on it. I've upgraded it. So uh, I'll talk about some of the things that I've done there, but overall, you're not going to be unhappy when you get this bike. You just got to kind of know a couple of things going into it. But outside of that, it's, it's, it's been stealth. All right, let's talk about the issues. So probably my biggest concern that I had with this bike was when I picked it up from the dealer. The dealer I went to really was not the best. They didn't have the race techs that you have at some of the other dealers. I got the bike because it was in stock. I got a decent price on it. Uh, kind of regretted who I bought it from, um, but it is what it is. And honestly, I think nowadays just service in general is kind of taking a little bit of a backseat and it's hard for some of these guys to recruit folks, to train them properly. So I get it. Um, part of it, you know, you're buying a KTM, you should have a better idea um, on how a motorcycle works and how these things operate. You should be comfortable rebuilding engines, tearing them down, all that good stuff. But buying the bike, wasn't really greased that well. That's no KTM. I've, I've had three KTMs. None of them have become greased. So it is what it is. It's part of your job to just kind of make sure, hey, you're checking it out. Um, the forks, they didn't put air in the forks. So my front of the bike was sagging. Um, and then the other thing was this, you know, those two I could fix. This one I couldn't quite figure out. Uh, the bike was fouling plugs like crazy. I actually fouled probably five or six plugs within the first 10 hours. Now it was winter time and I was going really slow and everyone was saying, hey, you gotta be on the pipe. You gotta be gunning it, blah, 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 blah. It still didn't make a whole lot of sense that you were fouling the amount of plugs I was fouling. And then of course, everyone's got their ideas. Drop down to a BR7ES, um, change your mixing ratio to 50 to one. You know, to me, I wanna follow what's in the manual. I want to follow what KTM's saying. You know, you figure they've popped probably quite a bit of hours on these bikes. Granted, maybe not in every type of territory, every type of terrain that, that we ride in, but you know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, there's some really good videos out there. Slevin's Racing is a good one. That guy knows his stuff. Um, he kind of said, hey, you drop down to that BR7 uh, and put in the EIX, which is a better plug. But again, I just, I'm like, something didn't seem right, you know, and everyone's having their ECU reflashed and whatnot. And I kind of just wanted to sit back and see what KTM does. Now, there has been a couple of updates. Um, I've had three updates, I believe, on my bike. Um, this last one, 
fixed a lot of it. There was some um, um, exhaust setup that wasn't done properly on my bike. And that has actually, I believe, fixed my splooging issue as well as my following the plugs. So I brought my bike in this last time for this last update and I just said, hey, can you just go over this? Like this is a brand new bike and just make sure everything's set properly. Um, because it, it, if you recall, I had some issues with my dealer. They basically took this thing out of the crate, charged me $600 for it nonetheless, took this thing out of the crate and said, here you go. And I, I don't think my bike was checked over at all. And so that's not necessarily on KTM, that's on the dealer. And I think these bikes require a little bit more of a setup than those TPI bikes did, or maybe they were just really comfortable with those TPI bikes. I'm not 100% sure. But ultimately, I think the problem was my bike wasn't set up out the gate correctly. And specifically, there was some exhaust. Um, and I have to look into it. I don't know the exact detail, but there were some exhaust adjustments that are supposed to be done uh, on, on those valve systems that it sounds like wasn't done. So that in combination of that is ECU mandatory update, it's been fine. I mean, I'll show you, I don't really have any oil coming out the back. If I do, it's a very small amount, which I can deal with, but there was a lot of crap coming out the back uh, of my exhaust. So I'll probably be looking into repacking the uh, silencer, but ultimately my, my problem's pretty much solved there. All right, so let's talk about a couple of upgrades that I did. So this, this is something that I think I always wanted to do, but never had the ability to do it back in the day. So I pretty much went out all out on this bike. Um, the bullet aluminum protection I have on it, I've put on every one of my KTMs. It's, it's all like, to me, it's necessary stuff. I, ro I ride in a lot of rocky and rooted areas. Um, so it's rough, you know, but am I going, Mach 10 on this thing, no, I'm, I'm a weekend rider. And again, I ride pretty conservatively being about 40 years old. Um, I don't wanna break anything. I got two kids, so I, I gotta take it easy. But I do wanna make sure that if I do fall down, I do crash, the bike's gonna be protected. Um, and ultimately that bullet aluminum product is amazing. Um, costs a ton, it's about a grand when you think about it, but I put on the radiator protection, uh, brake caliper uh, protection, brake disc, both front and rear. Um, there's a couple of things that I uh, protected are the throttle body sensors and whatnot. But um, you know, to me, it's it's a it's a small amount. Uh, not only to not only to pay for as far as something breaking, but heaven forbid you're in the middle of the woods and you bash on a rock, your your caliper or whatnot. It's going to make riding back, especially if you're out 10, 10 miles in or so. It's going to make it a pretty tough trip trip back. So. This bullet aluminum protection is really good. There's other brands out there. They all pretty much probably all do the same in the most part, but um, I like the way the bullet aluminum looks and um, I mean, it installs super easy. So very happy with that. Um, the other thing I did was, and this is kind of like, I really have never put uh, uh, an exhaust guard on my bike, but I put on a P3, it's uh, carbon fiber. I put the P3 uh, protection on the bike Again, I have never done this before on any of my bikes and I, I've honestly lucked out I've never really dented any of my exhaust. So you're probably gonna say I'm probably not riding hard enough, which is probably true but um, I got it just to protect it. You know, I, I, I really um, I honestly Never gotten one of these before I had a couple folks that I was talking with riding with uh, Say it's, it's a good idea. I'm riding a little bit in the winter. So I rode in January a little bit and um you know, icy conditions. So, um, you know, I wanted to have that in case I did slip, you know, put, turn the bike over and, and damaged it. So um, we'll see how that goes. I, again, I don't have much experience with it. And, um, you know, I'll probably give another update on that down the road. So with that said, I did buy tires and um, actually studded tires and new rims for this bike. So to make it super easy in the winter time, if I just want to swap, stop, swap wheels and tires, it takes me about 20 minutes and I'm off and, and ready to go riding in the, on the ice if I, if I have to. So I wanted to get that. Um, again, that was a little pricey, but it was one of those things that I felt like made a lot of sense um, with the type of riding that I'm gonna try to be doing this winter. Um, a lot of people ride. There's even some poker runs and things of that nature. 
in the woods that they do. Um, and I just want to be prepared for that and have the, have the tires ready and not have to swap rims or uh, swap wheels or anything like that. So the other thing I got, which I am super excited about, was the Recluse Clutch. So I bought that back in May. Now, I've done some work with clutches before, but I've never installed one of these. Um, so I actually had my dealer put this in. This is really the only thing I've had the dealer install. And essentially, I mean, this thing is great for the type of riding that I do, which is very technical and not being a pro rider. It's almost like having a crutch in a big way. It's almost cheating, to be honest with you. It's basically, you can let the clutch all the way out with a recluse clutch in any gear and the bike's just going to putt along and not stall. So, um, you know, when you drop a bike or when you put it down for whatever reason, it is still running, but it makes it so much easier. Pick it back up and keep going. Or let's say you get stuck in a uh, rocky bridge area that you're trying to cross and you have to stop midway and roll back down. You could do that with a recluse clutch. It's pretty sweet. Um, again, it's something that is probably more of an item that um, I got out of just riding with buddies and buddies having them and kind of liking how they feel and how they operate than um, anything else. Again, that recluse clutch, I'd say if I ever, you know, when I do go to upgrade this bike down the road, that's going to be the first accessory that goes on it because I think that is uh, beyond important. Um, between that and the protection for the bike, top, top two items that I'd want to have on it any type of upgrades. Um, so again, I'll show a little bit more detail on that recluse clutch, but again, it's pretty sweet. It's a nice little system. It was installed for me. So basically all I'm having to worry about is adjustments. So really happy with that. Last but not least, the, the latest thing, thing I had installed on this bike, which I am super excited about. I just put it on last night. It's called a GPR V5 steering stabilizer. Again, riding in some of the areas that I ride in, um, I, I think a steering stabilizer is almost needed. It's just a, almost like a sense of protection for yourself and it keeps you riding, it keeps the arm pump down. Um, arm pump is something that I've been struggling with all summer. You know, I'm riding on the weekends and not riding every day. So the arm pump has been pretty rough. So the uh, GPR V5 is what I got and I installed and they have a KKM kit which makes it pretty easy to put on. Um, only took my son and I maybe about an hour and a half to do the whole job. So again, another thing that I'm pretty excited about using. Um, I don't have that much experience with steering, steering stabilizers outside of riding with some buds. Um, but again, it's pretty sweet looking setup and something that I think I'm gonna get a lot of use out of. So that pretty much completes a uh, bulk of this video. Again, I'd say if, if you're looking at purchasing uh, a bike in this type of frame, um, the KTM is the way to go. KTM, Husky, um, I guess even Gas Gas at this point does it. They're, they're, it's a solid bike and they've worked out a lot of the kinks. Make sure your dealer's up to snuff. You know, I would even be as bold to ask them if they're familiar with the proper setup and things that you've heard is, you know, if they're not set up correctly, they're gonna spew a lot of oil and uh, burn up plugs, but Outside of that, it's, it's a great bike and um, I'm, I'm super happy with it. 